I put it in, take it out, taste it, put it back in, because my microwave be tripping and always making my food cold. You done yet? Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, we completely fucking killed you. You guys have never made an omelet in the microwave. It's pretty life changing. It's really, really easy. I've um, been doing this for a while. It's a little life hack. You don't know the struggles. You're not from the street. You can't say you're from the streets if you've never made an omelet in the microwave. I swear to God, microwave. I'm, I'm done waiting on you. I will find something else. I'll find a different snack. I promise. It'll be the last time you get to cook a meal. I mean, look at this guy. The concentrate's getting there. It's not quite there yet. Um, I don't think I'm going to flip it yet because it's a little soupy. But that's a good looking omelet. That's a good bacon egg and cheese omelet right there. But it's a good omelet at a fair price. I mean, any regular restaurant out there is gonna charge you 10 bucks for that all day long. They do a lot with 10 to 12 bucks. This right here is probably only cost, what are we talking about? What the f is we talking about in this vlog? I just don't wanna overcook it. It's always better I find that you undercook an omelet because a little bit of the runny texture in my opinion is better than the chewy texture of like the eggs. Uh, if you like overcook it or the dryness. Um, and I do find that the microwave is just an excellent way to cook the omelet. Or the stove. Not the stove. That takes too much work. This is how we're starting it with an omelet in the microwave. And we're just gonna scatter that around. God, we might even have to send this out to Gordon Ramsay. That's restaurant quality, honestly. That's a good omelet. That honestly tastes better than something that would be cooked on the stove. Little light on the meat. Wish I would have did a little bit more meat in there. Um, you know, maybe threw in some ham, mixed in some sausage. I even I wasn't very generous with the bacon bits, but overall the cheese texture, the cheese to egg ratio, really really good. Um, this is this is like day four now. This, this is a solid eight point eight three. Hosting a charity event for men that can't ejaculate. Really. If you can't come, let me know. Call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. But not for me. You know, I'm just going through a lot right now. Like an actual, like a parking lot. We're going to get a twisted tee. We were supposed to do a trick shot video today where we do all sorts of trick shots with different balls. And then, look at that little chode car. <laughs> look at that little smart car, bro. Out here in the middle of the sticks. The audacity to drive that around here. Must just have a massive cat. Yeah, but we were supposed to be doing a trick shot vlog today. And here we are getting a random amount of snow. So we're going to have to switch it up a little bit. Sir, do you know why I pulled you over today? Not sure, officer. Uh, are there any weapons or anything I should know about in the vehicle? Uh, I mean, nothing aside from this dangerous weapon. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with today, officer, or are we good? Huh. Smells like bitch in here. My name is Craig Stein. I am the CEO of the Twisted Tea Company. And things have been going, you could say, pretty good around here lately ever since that video went viral. Now, last week, I told everybody we were only one step away just one step away from making it and uh, all that step was was money and now since that video went viral we've been swimming in the money well hey bill gates what's up yeah we're still on for dinner tonight the, oh oh actually you're, you're not i play golf with pearls i've got 99 problems but money ain't one of them if money can't buy happiness then i'll just rat because I have so much of it now. Couldn't decide which Rolex to wear this morning, so I just decided to wear them both. And then they told me I'm gonna have to pay taxes on all this money we're making. <laughs> I'm not poor. Yeah, I was wondering if it was possible to get a boat added on top of my boat. When life gives you lemons and a big brain like mine, you make the hottest selling beverage in the world. What do you mean Jesus died for my sins? Just forward me over to him. I'll see if I can pay him to get in. <coughs> Kobe, they said cash in your chips. This is it, this is the biggest you're gonna get. 
sell your stock. It's not going to go up anymore. It's peaking. I told them no. No, I won't do that. Look at me now. I'm sitting here with a net worth of $1.5 million. One of the richest men in the world. I have it all. The cat, the money. But am I happy? Yes. They say money can't buy happiness, but... Thank you. If money doesn't grow on trees, why do banks have branches? So we're taking on our Christmas tree right now and we found one of the most oddly satisfying things in the world. So we may or may not have watered this tree for the past week. And by we, I mean me, because this is my job and responsibility as the guy. These needles are starting to turn brown on the tree and with like little than, not even little, like absolutely no effort whatsoever. You touch them and they just fall off. It's really satisfying. We're having so much fun doing it. We are the world's worst tree parents. How are you guys alive still? Are you dying on me? Don't die on me. I need you. He's a puppy, by the way. Ten months old. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. We completely fucking killed you. This is bad. <laughs> like, this thing is literally like 15 pounds. No. Okay, I'm just going to shake it because it's going to go all over the hallway. We thought we got, like, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I have a thing against like getting fake trees, but buddy, we're not cut out for this. We what? don't deserve to have a real tree. No, the there's more needles on the ground than there are on the tree. I had this oh. thing for like three weeks. Look at that. It's raining the needles. I'm sorry you ruined your birthday, Jesus. All right, first things first, I'm the realist. First things first, I'm the realist. Second thing. I'm getting a ton of people that are finding out that I went on that Judge Judy show and I'm constantly getting messages of people just asking what it was like and wanting to basically know how the whole thing played out. Is it real? Different questions associated with it. So I'm just going to clear the air on it right now and explain to everybody how the entire process worked and uh, just give my testimonial of what happened to me. When I went on that show, it was, it was either... Ju it was June or May of 2018. The episode aired in September of 2018. It was season 22, episode 221. It was titled Generation Z uh, Business Startup Fail. What happened was I had a business partner at the time who, uh, I mean, we were both young and stupid and both of us, this is our first time ever doing anything business related. So we had a bunch of money coming in. I felt like he was taking money and spending it in places that he shouldn't have been, like taking money out of our business bank account to pay for his grandma's uh, consumer's bill and house, all, all her bills, and just was overreaching for stuff that shouldn't have happened between that and then he's trying to uh, use my car. Long story short, just a lot of wrongdoings that I felt like were happening. So. He started to, uh, after I confronted him about all that, he started to go in and he had access to all my Facebook account, Instagram, all my social media platforms because, you know, we're in business together and we were running a social media marketing agency. So when I confronted him about everything and the whole situation just blew up and escalated, he went into all my social media accounts like a week later and changed all my passwords. And we had a bunch of supplies up in the office at his house that we were working at that I personally funded that he was refusing to, you know, give back. So between the fact that he refused to give stuff back, he was t taking like literally 80% of the money out of the business, putting it in his own pocket, and paying for his grandma's bills and this and that with it, without even telling me. And the fact that he went in and changed all of my social media passwords because that's how I was generating clients. I reach out to clients on social media, and I closed down deals that way. Between all of that stuff happening, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna put a little bit of fear into this kid and uh, just take him to small claims court, 
you know, I wasn't even seriously pushing it. I just wanted to file for it so that he got scared and would stop messing with me. And it was, what, two or three weeks later, I got a letter in the mail from a field analyzer. So the field analyzer found the case that I brought to the courthouse. They go all over the country and do this. And, uh, you know, he reached out to me and I was like, yeah, let's set this up. I'm like, I'm down to go on for TV show because I'm all about marketing. I'm like, you know, wiretap that audience and see what we can do with that. Uh, he's like, all right, cool. We'd love to have you on the show. And he brought me to the next step, which was a producer of the show. And I talked to him and he learned the whole logistics of my case and this and that and everything associated with it, what I was suing for, what the intent was. And he's like, all right, cool. Let's uh, get this all set up. You know, we're going to pay for your plane ticket, your uh, hotel room out here. We're going to give you food credit, Uber credit, and we're going to pay you to be on the show. So they paid me a hundred bucks to be on the show and flew me out to Hollywood. It was pretty cool. Fun little trip. Got a full inclusive, all paid for trip. So fast forward, when I actually get out there and get to the show, um, it was kind of a surreal thing. Cause I'm like, I know I'm about to be in front of millions of people on this show and I don't want to look like an idiot. That's the only thing I'm thinking the whole time. And if you were to watch my case, I walked in with a packet of papers, like this thick. I had like 200 pieces of paper just for any scenario, anything that would have came up. I'm like, I want to be ready. I don't want to have, not have the answer. I studied it all. I had enough papers that it looked like I was studying for a doctor's final exam. But we get there, it's about an hour and a half before we shoot. And they put you in your own little holding room that you just stay in before the show actually records and airs. And the building that you go into is like this big warehouse. Um, I don't even know what road it was on, but it's there in Hollywood. It's on a little back road. But it looked like a big warehouse. It's not even like a real courthouse. Like it's a cardboard plywood set that's put together. But it looks real. It looks looks really real. And in the room there was a couch, a TV, and the only thing on the TV is Judge Judy. It's all you can watch. Then they have like the producer come in the room, talk to you, brief you. And what got me upset me about that show and if you watch the show it's entertaining and it kind of looks like everybody's an idiot on the show and that is completely intentional they tell me 30 minutes before the show starts they're like you can't go after this you're not allowed to go after this for your case um, basically you have 30 minutes to figure out what you're gonna do and then we're going live it's a one take thing don't do multiple takes it's a one take 20 minute session before you get flew out there too they make you sign a document that says you'll abide to do whatever they say Otherwise, you have to pay for the trip. Everything that they paid for, the all-inclusive trip, you'll have to pay them back for that. So there I am. I only have 30 minutes to figure out what to do, what to say. And if you watch my episode, I, I feel like I did a decent job, but I still kind of look stupid. It kind of looked like, what the hell is this guy even here for? He's not here for anything. I ended up, the only thing I was able to even go after was two tablets when I was going after a lot more than two tablets. You care less about the tablets. When you get into the courtroom, it's uh, a pretty surreal thing because uh, everybody's watched that show. I watched that show growing up. It's one thing to see it on TV. It's one thing to actually be there and be face to face with Judge Judy. I mean, she, when she stares at you, it's like she's cutting right through your soul with her eyes. So when we got into what you would call the courtroom, which was again, just a plywood and cardboard set. So above like the stage and everything that Judge Judy's on, they have different like signs that would light up to tell the audience when to laugh or when to clap or what to do. And you know, I was in there, they give you like five minutes before the thing shoots to brief you and this and that. I turned around and I don't know what it was. People that were in the pews, or whatever you call those things that sit there behind you when you're doing your case, like it was crazy. It was almost like they were robots. I guess I don't know how to explain it. I was sitting there trying to talk to them. They, they wouldn't even look at you. Like everybody's just sitting completely still, head forward, no motion. But when, when the cameras are off and not rolling, they're just sitting there staring forward. They're not moving. They're not looking in any direction. And then when the producer yelled out, all right, let's move and get up and socialize. Everybody just automatically stands up and they start talking and socializing. And then I come walking in and I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, this is the stuff that you hear with conspiracies about Hollywood and how everybody's like robots and <laughs> wizard people and all this other crazy stuff. And I'm like, like I'm seeing it firsthand right now. Like these are, these are real people. They look like real people. I'm pretty sure they're real people. I'm like, but like, 
they're ro like robots. They're not in control of themselves. It was weird. They're all sitting there, staring forward, no motion, no, no, no motion, no emotion. They're not putting any smiles, nothing. Not until they're cued to. So like I said, those lights light up and they tell them when to laugh. They tell them when to, it's basically what to do, to clap. And yeah, I just walked in. Next thing you know, uh, did the case. It was, it was pretty good. You know, the guy that I was suing and going against, I never intended for it to actually get that far. I more or less just wanted to put the fear of God into him because I was tired of him messing with me. Um, but we were just young and dumb. I mean, I he had just turned 21 at the point. Um, I was 20, almost 21. So, I mean, we were like really young. This was a couple of years ago, just starting off in business. You know, we started our marketing agency and within, it was only running for what, three months? And within that three months, you know, we got up to, it was like six or seven thousand dollars in, in in business revenue. Just never seen anything like that that popped off that fast. So between everything that happened, it was just two young guys that were dumb in business. You know, I'm not friends with the guy anymore. Do I have any intent to be his friend again? Not really. I don't hate him. I got no animosity or negativity to say about him. I don't really know the guy anymore. But um, yeah, a lot of people ask me all the time. The story about Judge Judy and this and that, and that's just pretty much what I would say about it. It was, it was really sketchy. Everything out there, like, they're real people, but I mean, it's, it's like they're real people, but they're programmed to do what they're cued to do. I'm sitting there turned around before the recording, just trying to talk to these people, staring at them, and they're like just staring forward, not even looking at me. So. You hear some conspiracies about Hollywood and stuff all the time. I've seen it firsthand, so I guess that was pretty cool. But, yeah, that's my story about Judge Judy and uh, going on there. Again, my episode was Season 22, Episode 221. You can go and check it out. You can find it someplace. Just go out there and search for it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's all I got in this video, guys. So thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop me a like. And if you have any other questions, I'll address some questions for this. Drop them down in the comments and I'll answer them. I'll get back to you. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.